This is the new Bentley Bentayga, and it's a Ooh. bit like this rather posh looking bottle of hand sanitizer. You see, really, inside it's just the usual alcohol. Ow! I've got to cut my hand. So it's just normal alcohol, yet it comes in a lovely Bentleyfied wrapper, so it just feels more glorious. And that's the same as this car. Underneath the skin, it's exactly the same as an Audi Q7 and a Porsche Cayenne, but yeah, Porsche it's Cayenne. wrapped love, up love, in this lovely love. Bentley outfit. Obviously, that doesn't come cheap. This car starts from £147,000. Now, this model I've got here, because it's a limited edition first edition model it costs almost two hundred thousand pounds with options which is a lot of money now if you want to check out lee stills on this bentley or other bentleys click on the pop out banner up there to download the new car wow app it's completely free not that that matters to you if you can afford a bentley now if you're not looking for a new car right now then just google car wow at a later date and we'll help save you a ton of cash on your new car I wonder if i can use this as perfume <laughs> no it just makes me smell like a drunk Buying a new car? Head to CarWow to get offers from the UK's top dealers. CarWow.co.uk, the car buying comparison site. Let's kick off the video by talking about the Bentayga's design because Bentley has reworked it considerably to make it less ugly. The biggest difference is here at the back. It's very different to before. The lights like and the shape before. of them mimic those of the GT Coupe. It's nice. Also, they do a little dance when you turn them on and they've got this Audi. crystal jewel-like effect in them. Also, look at this, you've got a rear diffuser there. Seems a bit excessive and a larger roof spoiler than before. And this one is in carbon fiber. Still, it does sort of need them because this car can do 180 miles an hour. Another thing they've the done with the car is lowered the number plate down so you can just have big it? Bentley across the back so everyone knows how rich you are. And this is the V8, so it's got twin tailpipes. If you have the W12 with a bigger engine, the tailpipe is one big oval. Oh yeah. Let's move down the side. This is less different than before, but you do get new alloy wheel designs like and you get 22 inches as standard. They've also pushed the wheels out slightly and changed the bodywork a little bit around here. So the wheel fills the arch better than before. All this kind of shape and stuff is very similar to before, but you have new side skirts. Once again, carbon fiber, which of course you have to pay extra for. New thing is this, the Bentley air vent on the wing. It's not, not actually a vent. It's just a lying bee rather than a flying bee. See what I did there? Now at the front, the changes are more dramatic than down the side. So you've got a new bigger grill. I also like the way that they haven't included the sensors in the grill. They're lowered down there. Sometimes they put them down the car and they ruin the look of the grill. The only thing that's affecting the look ever so slightly is the parking camera. Sort of like a little zit. I want to just squeeze it, get rid of it. It's not too bad, really. One of the big differences, though, is with the lights. They push them out to the side more and they're elliptical rather than I, round. I like Once front. again, jingle like jangle jewelry effect in your lights and of course, they're full LEDs with the clever technology to blank out the beam when you're on high beam so they don't dazzle other drivers. Like it's all very imposing, and I think it looks quite a lot better than the previous Bentayga. No. I mean, that car looked like a bit of a pig. This one, it's more of a rhino. It's still not pretty, but there is a beauty to its brutishness. Anyway, let's have a look inside because there's vast changes in there as well. Entering a Bentley Bentayga is a little bit like entering a private members club. Oh, yeah. They're not that kind, you dirty minded buggers. <laughs> it feels really, really exclusive and luxurious in here. The design of the dash is all new. I like it. You get new steering wheel as well. You've also got new seats. There's new doors well, door cards. Though, while I do like it, there is something slightly efficiently Germanic about it. A little bit Audi-ish. And I've also got Audi stalks here and Audi switches here. But then Audi does own Bentley. Well, actually, Volkswagen owns Audi, which owns Bentley. Fortunately, though, there is still plenty and plenty of Bentley bling. So there's shiny bits everywhere. Shiny, shiny, shiny here, shiny there. More shiny for the dual zone climate control here in the front and shininess there. You've also got shininess there for the new air vents, but you've still got the classic Bentley organ stops to let the air come out. 
Oh, stop it. And of course, a Bentley clock, which I will be removing from the car later and selling on eBay. If you just want to check the listing, it's in the link in the description below the video. There's also lots of really nice quilted stitching and on the seats, you can get upgraded seats, which these are, with special micro piping, which means that you have a smaller seam here for this edge of the seat. Now, I'm not so keen on the name. Micro piping sort of just reminds me of micro penis. <laughs> Anyway, let's just move quickly on, forget about that. The luxury extends even to the carpet, so so thick and sumptuous. These are the upgraded ones, and oh yeah, thick mat. Let's, let's carry on talking about the infotainment system. All new, much better than the old one. The old one was a bit clunky and old fashioned. This one is okay. slicker, it's widescreen, it's got okay. good graphics, it's easy to use, shortcut buttons down the side, it's got Apple CarPlay, um, Android Auto. You can also change the interior mood lighting Crazy. between a wide variety of colours. Look, you've got all of those to choose from. Hmm, oh, I like purple. And you've got Crazy. digital dials as well, which I'm so so about. Reason being, I did like the old fashioned analog dials, they sort of suit Bentley's, but in the Continental GT, you get like analog effect on the dials. You don't hear in the Bentayga, they're just a bit more digitally, though it does mean you've got loads of functionality so you can look at different views, big screen mapping. It's all fairly easy to use. Speaking of technology, the car gets a lot wireless charging for your mobile phone and you've got two USBs in there and they're USB-Cs as well, so you better make sure you've got the right cable. Though, this brings on to storage and this central armrest thing is pretty pointless because look, I can't fit my Bentley perfume in there. Look, it's called Rich Pimento. I don't know why they just don't call it Rich. It's more appropriate. I like this, the Bentley does. They do like the glasses holder, which is open and obviously it's padded inside so you don't scratch your lenses. It means that you can just be driving along. Oh, I'm driving along, see someone and go, oh look, quickly, I can just, yeah. Yeah, I'm cool. They see me rolling. You cool? cool? Yeah, it's handy that is, isn't it, to be able to just up the star when you need to. What's not so stylish though is this. Why don't Bentley have a cover for the cup holders? That just spoils the look of this centre console. It's a bit annoying. The glove box is a little bit annoying as well because it looks big, but actually you can't fit much in it because then the door won't shut. Can't complain about the door bins though. They can hold a large bottle of water. Maybe I should say that's a magnum of water, a Jeroboam. Anyway, let's move on to the back seats because this car has seriously improved in the rear. Somehow or other, Bentley has increased the rear knee room. Wow. It was already big, but now look at that, loads. There's also loads of space to stretch out under the chair in front. And then you really feel I like you're in a limousine on stilts. Headroom's good as oh, well, oh, and you can recline the seats and There's slide them forwards. Though, why would you do that? Because then you've got the same amount of knee room as in a Volkswagen up. So, let's go back again. That's better. Ow! Just drag my hand in the mechanism. I always injure myself in car reviews. Now, if you need to carry three people at once, you can do because this car's body is pretty wide. There is a hump in the floor, but the footwells are so large, it doesn't matter about that. There's plenty of space for everyone's feet. Okay. Though this middle seat is a little bit hard. It doesn't feel quite so premium. In fact, if you have a person sat either side of you, it's going to be like you're in economy class on an airplane, if you can remember what going on an airplane is like. <laughs> now, what you can do though with this car is specify two individual rear chairs in the back, so it's a four-seater. You can even get a seven-seater version as well if you need to carry lots of children with you. And if you do, there's ice fixed angle points there and there. And obviously, being a really big, spacious car in the back, it's easy to fit any kind of child seat in here. And kids will love it because if you get it with this sunroof here, you get a great view out. The back windows are really big as well, so that helps. And do they or don't they? Will they go all the way down? Come on, Bentley. Can you do it? No. Brilliant. At least they're double glazed though, so that keeps the noise out. Yeah, there's loads of luxury features in here. Shiny bits here, you've got shiny bits here, the coat hook is shiny, the light feels expensive as does the grab handle. You've got really expensive looking covers for the upgraded name stereo system, though it is a little bit like a cheese grater. In fact, if you're wondering how I did that cut, that's got something to do with it. You can also set the temperature here in the back because you've got two zone climate control here in the rear as well and you control it using this digital display down here and it's got various other functions as well that you can do. You can even get ventilated seats in the back, that's lovely, and control the blinds, shut the blind, there we go. 
Now, you might think that it's really hard to like, operate it down here, but you can eject this and use it like a tablet. No matter how hard I try, and I have looked into this, I can't seem to get the tablet to eject. Maybe they knew that I might steal it like the clock, and so Bentley has glued it in there. Buggers. Right, let's go to the boot, because this is an area where the Bentayger isn't quite so impressive. You can get it with one of those wavy 40 hands-free tailgates, but this car doesn't have it, even though it's £200,000. Now, what I was saying was the boot size. It's 484 litres. If you can't quite visualise what 484 litres looks like, this is how many carry-on airplane-style luggage pieces you can fit in this car's boot underneath the load cover. Now, by comparison, a Rolls-Royce Cullinan's boot is 600 litres. Okay. A Mercedes G63's boot is 667 litres. Wow. Still, it is big enough for most people. Exactly. And if you need to load it, you can press this button to lower the car down on its air suspension and it hisses as it does it like an angry cat. It's still lowering. It's still lowering fully low and then it makes it easier for your big bull mastiff which is about the size of me woof it's weird to climb into the boot and it's a square shape if you think there's something under here there's not there is a net there 12 volt socket there and some runners there so you can fit dividers in the boot if you want to pay some more money the luxury is pretty good though nice carpet and leather on this particular model extends all the way back here this car is totally trimmed out in slaughtered animal. One thing that does annoy me about this is that if you want to fold the rear seats down, you have to walk around to the seats. There's no catch in the boot. And when you do fold them down, bear with me. No, no, come on. Oh, see, <laughs> they don't lie fully flat. They stick up a bit and there's a bit of a ridge here. So it could be annoying when you're maneuvering things in the boot. And that brings you on to five annoying things about the Bentley Bentayga. The gas struts which prop up the bonnet have resistance to them when you open the bonnet, which is annoying. Look at this. It's a bit hard to do it. It's like one of those gym trainers that were popular in the early noughties. It's not a problem for you as the owner because you're not going to go under here, but it will be for the technician who has to work on your car and it's going to make them a little bit more tired at the end of the day. When you fold down the armrest, you realise that you have a couple of cup holders there, which could be handy, unless of course you want to use the armrest because then your arm goes in it. I don't know what it is with Bentley and not being bothered to cover their cup holders. You wouldn't have that lack of attention to detail in a Rolls-Royce Cullinan. Speaking of which, if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can watch my full in-depth video review of that car. Some of the stitching is a little bit wonky. Now, I do accept that this car is hand-built and that humanness does make it feel less Germanic and more British, but it's still doing my OCD in. The boot's low cover is very posh, but it's also very, very heavy. Fortunately, it's got a handle to help you remove it. Oh, God. Oh. The only thing is, if you want to fill up your boot now, you've got nowhere to store this because it won't go under there. So you might have to just put it in the boot like that, and then the leatherette will all get scuffed. While you can control pretty much everything to do with this seat using these controls here. Obviously, the movement of the seat, the side bolsters, how much they grip you, the amount of lumbar support, and even the massage function. For some reason, the headrest is the only bit that's manual. Now, in a Mercedes, they can figure out how to control that electrically as well. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. Here's five. The ventilation system has an ionization function and what that does is emit negatively charged particles and these stick to pollutants and then cause the pollutants to then stick to other surfaces, thereby removing them from the air. The windscreen wipers have 22 little jets in them. It means that when you use the windscreen wash, spray doesn't go everywhere. Look at that, oh, very good. I'm completely dry. Also, the water is heated to aid cleaning. There's even a little washer which cleans the sensors at the front so you don't get those error messages from your safety systems. For £3,600, you can get something called Terrain Response System. What that does is allow you to set up the car accordingly, depending on which surface you're driving on. So it'll alter things such as the four-wheel drive system, central differential, the rear differential, the throttle response, the gear changes, the intervention from the stability control, and the suspension ride height. You can just do it by turning this knob. So that's snow and grass, that's gravel, that's muddy ruts, and that one's for sand. 
You can get the Bentayga with active anti-roll bars. So what they do is hold the wheels firmly together when you're cornering, because it stops the car leaning so much. But then if you're going over bumps or off-road, they release so the wheels can move much more freely independently with more travel like that. So is this a dance I'm starting now? Come on, get with the memes, do some memes. But you get the idea. You can get a special biometric security box underneath the central armrest where you can store valuable items and you can only access them by using your thumbprint or a fingerprint. Speaking of which, um, do you think I should get a new phone? Galaxy S10 Plus, I'm thinking of getting a Galaxy S20 or maybe there's some other phone I should get. Let me know in the comments below. You'll be able to get the Bentley Bentayga with a six litre W12 twin turbo with over 600 horsepower. Though if you're feeling a bit guilty about the environment, there's also a V6 hybrid with 440 horsepower. For now though, the only engine available is this V8. It's a four litre twin turbo and it puts out 550 horsepower and 770 newton meters of torque. Interestingly, it's the same engine as in the new Audi S8, only in that car it has 571 horsepower and 800 newton meters of torque. They both have eight speed automatic gearboxes and a four wheel drive. That car weighs 2.3 tons. This is 2.4 tons, but obviously it has the added benefit of being able to go off road, even though they're both as spacious pretty much inside. What I want to find out is this car quick enough to make the performance limousine redundant. Well, we're gonna have a drag race to find out. And I'm gonna see how quick this car is to 60 while I'm doing it using my specialist timing gear up here. Let's race. Got him off the line, good reaction. I do with it quite roll. Now that Audi's getting ahead, Dole. Oh. gonna beat me. Dang it. He's definitely gonna beat me. That was quick. Not as quick as an Audi S8, but it still did 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds, which is quicker than my AMG G63, which took 4.3 seconds. And if you oh. click on the pop out banner up there, you can go watch my review of that car. But this is nuts. It did 0 to 100 in 9.5 seconds and the standing quarter mile in 12.2 seconds. It's fast. The thing is about this car is that you don't actually drive it quick that often. You basically just want to chill and relax. In fact, you never feel in a hurry in this car. Now, it's for two reasons, really. One is that you just want to spend as long as you possibly can in it because it's absolutely lovely to sit in. The second reason is that, well, it doesn't matter if you're late. You see, if you're rich enough to be able to afford a Bentley Bentayga, then you're probably important enough for people to wait for you. Another thing that I like about it is that when you're just cruising around town, it's just so simple. Yeah, it's a big car, so it's harder to fit through gaps, but you're sitting up high so you can see what's going on. Parking can be a little bit problematic because the rear window isn't that big but you've got all the technology. You've got your surround view cameras, your sensors, and the car will even park itself for you if you're complete and it's a moron. The only problem is finding a space big enough. Maneuvering into it is easy though, because the steering is super, super light, and you won't end up looking like a chump if you come to a mini roundabout, because the turning circle is good enough to go round without you having to stop and do a three-point turn. Think more luxury yacht than oil tanker and you're pretty much there. Another thing I really like is the gearbox. It's just silky smooth. I don't even know that there's any gears there. And if they are, they're lubricated by melted butter. It's just glorious. But if you suddenly need to accelerate and throw the throttle and boom, away you go. Whoa, that's enough there. This definitely gets up the speedo pretty blumming quickly. And when you are up to speed, it feels solid, it feels safe, it feels comfortable. It's so quiet. There is no wind noise. Another thing that's quite impressive is that it's a powerful car. It's a heavy car. Yet if you're gentle, it's not that ruinous in terms of miles per gallon. Well, relatively speaking. I'm getting 23 miles per gallon. It doesn't really matter if you're Bentley owned in terms of the cost. It's more how often you're going to have to pull over to fill up. I'll tell you another thing that takes the strain out of this car, and it's the adaptive cruise control. So let me just 
make it active and it'll do that thing, keep me a safe distance from the car in front and automatically steer to keep me in lane. So I don't really have to think about much other than how smug I am. Question is though, what is this car like when it encounters a twisty road? It's gonna handle like a hippo, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Well, actually no, it's more like an ox, but an ox in running shoes because for um, a big car it stays very flat through the bends and it grips very well thanks to its four-wheel drive system the thing is drive. the steering look at that is yeah, stops that communication between you and the road i mean that's part uh, of like the bentley thing you want to not feel so much but it does mean this car isn't as fun to drive as a bmw x6m and if you click on the pop-out banner up there you watch my full in-depth video review of that car there is one last thing for me to test on the bentayga and that's its off-road capability. And I'm going to do a real-life test, something that will equate to how it will be used in the real world. You see, this is the kind of off-roading you're going to be doing if you own a car like this. It's going to get no more extreme than just going up a gravel track through the woods, across your estate, to the entrance of the estate the home. Cheerio, old boy. So then, what's my final verdict on the new Bentley Bentayga? Should you bleh, avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should avoid it if you can't afford it. But if you can, you should just go right ahead and buy it. The Bentayga was always a great car. It just looked a bit bleh, whereas now it looks bleh, bleh, Bye. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think of the car in the comments below. If you're wondering what's going on here, Rory here is on the phone to Bentley, one of their engineers.